And without further ado, we are excited to have Iris Omari Ansong be up next and hear about her research project, Hierarchy of Dances and Decolonial Analysis of Hierarchical Structures in the European Dancecape. Iris is a Vienna-based dancer and performer working at the intersection of the arts and culture sector. Her artistic work is dedicated to intervening topics like emancipation, pleasure, vulnerability and decoloniality with her knowledge of dance, movement and social sciences. In the course of her dance studies at Music and Art University Vienna, she wrote a thesis about the plurality of dance forms and their hierarchization in the European dance scape from a decolonial perspective. Thank you, Iris, for being part of our conference today as well. And the floor is yours. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me, for um, inviting me to share my research in this year's conference. Um, it has been a pleasure and so inspiring to listen to all the talks so far. And I will jump right into it with my presentation. So um, I'm happy to share a bit about my research I did last year, Hierarchy of Dances, a decolonial de analysis of hierarchical structures in the European dance scape. So this research was um, a literature work. So I was mainly analyzing talks and referencing relevant literature, literature to discuss the research questions. Bear with me, it was a theoretical work, so it will be a lot of input, but please, um, take notes or write down questions for the end of this talk. Um, it was a critical investigation which examines dominant image, images of dance in Europe while raising questions about ongoing effects of colonialism and to what extent these are reflected in existing exclusions and racisms in the cosmos of dance. My starting point for this research was um, a symposium that was held by the German Dance Association, um, which happened in late 2021 and was focusing on diversity. This research subject um, is located in the field of critical dance studies. And I came up with the following research questions. To what extent is there a hierarchical structure between institutionalized and non-institutionalized dance form in Central Europe? Um, I came up with the sub-questions, which role do categories such as, um, as traditionally dances marked as traditional, contemporary dance and street dance play in this context, and what values are ascribed to these artistic forms and with them to the dancing bodies that practice them. So in this work, I tried to address a blind spot in the collective engagement to, this, to the omnipresent topic of diversity and social justice, by approaching the dominance of specific dance forms and the accompanying hierarchization of dance styles as a central problem. I want to speak a bit about um, colonial continuity and anti-colonial criticism. So um, the inadequate reception of post-colonial theories has the consequence that the reflection of the European colonial history still shows great deficiencies. Instead of a paradigm shift that post-colonialism should have initiated from the mid 20th century on, dealing with the enduring manifestations of European colonialism, the need for a new school of thought emerged that included previous theories as well as the actual state of the post-colonial and brackets um, world uh, with all its inherited disproportions and grievances. Um, the Peruvian social scientist Anibal Chiano expressed his critique through the concept of coloniality of power in 1992. In contrast to the term post-colonialism, the term coloniality refers to an enduring continuous power complex, which is based on European colonialism, the shadow side and the precondition of Western modernity at the same time. So the permanence of colonial 
logic, metaphysics, and power matrix is inseparable from what is called the Western modernity. The modern West, just like the colonies themselves, are a product of colonialism. In the form of coloniality, the term um, coined by Chiano, um, it operates today in hegemonic institutions and discourses. So if coloniality refers to that logic and matrix of power that persists even after the formal independence of former colonies, decoloniality refers to the effort to rehumanize the world and break through hierarchies of difference according to Maldonado Torres. It focuses on the production of counter narratives, counter discourses, counter knowledge, counter practices that aim to dismantle coloniality and open up multiple ways of being in the world. The term decolonial is increasingly used to describe this very perspective and refers to a political epistemic approach rather than a disciplinary field of study. Decoloniality or um, to decolonial to decolonize, to decolonize <laughs> therefore means both the analytical task of dismantling the logic of coloniality and the progressive task of contributing to the construction of a world in which many worlds coexist. So dance in Central Europe. Um, as I said, um, or as I was introduced, I'm based in Vienna in Austria. That is a small um, German speaking country. And yeah, this is just maybe for orientation uh, geographically where which position I am speaking from. So to attempt a survey of the dance landscape of Central Europe, I worked with classifications, differentiating between dance forms within and outside of institutional interlinkages. Um, dance and choreography do not take place in a vacuum. This is a quote. It is the first sentence in the book um, Choreography and Institution by Yvonne Hart and Martin Stern. Um, according to this, institutions promote for institutions that promote and teach dance as well as those that present, market, and archive it, have a significant role in its practice, production, and reproduction. So when I use the term um, institutional, I'm not referring to tourism, leisure institutions, but to dance institutions, dance houses, and theaters. Um, and I'm referring to this geographical um, place of Central Europe, I have to also add here. So again, dance never takes place in a context-free space. And um, in historical retrospect, as well as in the present of European dance, we can see a threefold division into folk dance, social dance, and stage dance. And the dance scholar Gabriele Klein explains how there's an ongoing distinction between artistic and commercial dance that emerged from the Western modern dance movement. And this um, ongoing distinction fuels the dichotomy of high culture and popular cult culture. She critically questioned whether contemporary dance makes use of other dance forms under the guise of seeking innovation without recognizing these dance forms themselves as artistic practice. A good example for this is the dance form breakdance, which first found its way into the contemporary dance discourse as a virtuous dance technique, then as an innovative dance aesthetic when it was recognized by legitimate spokespersons of that field. So accordingly, it is no coincidence that choreographers from non-European cultures only find acceptance as contemporary dancers and corresponding positions in contemporary dance discourse when they adapt their style to the aesthetic concepts of the global north. Um, in the discussion about processes um, of, institu of institutionalization, choreographic pr procedures and modes of production, institutional entanglements 
of classical ballet and contemporary dance are mentioned numerous times. Dance forms that are located outside of funded stages and institutions receive no or very little subsidized attention and with them also the people um, practicing them. So for this um, research, I worked with a categorical division of dance forms. I worked with the term dance marked as traditional, which is a term used by the choreographer and researcher Sandra Chateria, who refers to the discrepancies that she has experienced in the European dance context due to her training in Indian dance forms. She refers to, or the term refers to the powerful impact of external attribution and marking, which is almost impossible to escape from. From historical dance forms like the Indian Kuchipudi, Katak, the Nigerian Bata dance, and more recent dance forms like South African Pansula, everything becomes one under the title of traditional. Um, Adeniyi, a French Nigerian performance artist and cultural scientist, vividly points out that the prevalent generalization crisis in European scholarship and audiences is happening. Um, so he says, just as there is no European dance, there is no singular African dance or singular Indian dance or Oriental dance. Nora Armin um, argues that there is no form of folklore that is not contemporary, that does not move along with the respective bodies in time and space, and finally leaves the folkloric historical aspect behind in practice. The next category I formed and used in the research is street dance or street dances. This is a term that subsumes a variety of African-American social dances and club dances. These include forms such as house dance, break dance, clowning, tutting, cramping, animation, locking or popping, and in a broader sense, also ballroom forms such as voguing or whacking, to just name a few. And yeah, I used that term in this work. As I said, street dances have their origins in Afro-American cultures, explains the um, cultural scientist Katrin Blantard. Their genesis should be viewed in a broader post-colonial framework and traced to marginalized environments. The word street here refers to a non-institutional space of practice, participation and teaching, she explains. At the core of the multiple forms of street dance, there's a strong social component with its community building potential. Lantar proposes the term black social dance forms as an appropriate umbrella term that includes all the forms of street dance while valuing their origins. And now to use generalizing terms such as hip hop or urban for this whole spectrum of different dance styles leads to a disregard for the different histories that constitute the culture of each of these styles. Moreover, recent debates surrounding the term urban point to a racist connotation. In the 1970s, multidisciplinary and cross-genre works by African-American artists, especially in music, but also in dance and other disciplines, got labeled as urban. And it proved, or yeah, it proved that it was more profitable to cover up their African-American origins. So also, the emergence of diverse genres and styles for Black artists in various artistic fields was and continues to be discredited by the simplification urban. The term is widely used without awareness of its controversial start status, but uh, in recent years, those involved in the discourse have actively shifted away from it. And one more thing I want to say about uh, street dances is uh, something that Raphael Hillebrand mentioned. He emphasizes that the accessibility of, as he emphasizes the accessibility of different street dance styles um, is no coincidence because one component that unites all these different forms is their ability to unite people. He says, in contrast to ballet, 
which has less of a participatory character than a selective one, the creation of alliances between the oppressed and the marginalized is originally and today a fundamental component of street dance forms. And now I will speak a bit about contemporary dance. Um, at its birth in the 1970s, contemporary dance was an active rebellion against the strict boundaries and doctrines of ballet typical movement structures. Originally, it embodied a collective quest to break down classical foundations, challenge norms, and explore the potential for emotional resonance while also embracing the changes in the world like decolonization, migration, decentralization in contemporary dance. Um, but today it's important to take a more nuanced look at the social traditions um, and the historical moments that created the space for contemporary dance to develop. In her German essay, Cultural Simultaneity, Contemporary Dance from a Post-Migrant Perspective, Sandra Chateria highlights the entanglement of aesthetic criteria of contemporary dance in Europe with the globalized Eurocentric discourses and explains how these reproduce neocolonial relations of cultural non-simultaneity. Characteristics such as diversity, multiplicity, and heterogeneity are emphasized in many descriptions of contemporary dance. Although the idea of crossing borders seems to be of central importance, the dance style is discursively located within the paradigm of Western artistic dance. There is no, as the plural implies, cultural heterogeneity, but rather a clear cultural embeddedness in Euro-American um, aesthetics, she argues. And rarely it is marked as explicitly European, Euro-American or Western in German literature. Um, yet this Eurocentric derivations and attitudes continue to be the norm. So she says the shallow image of cultural heterogeneity emerged when non-European dance forms served as cultural forms in choreographies. And she further explains that ethnicized forms of movement remain interchangeable citations and refers to the practice of cultural appropriation. So now I want to speak a bit about the misalignment in the dance scape. And I want to start with the bias of modernity. Nora Amin, curator and moderator of the symposium that um, I was speaking of earlier, considers modernity as a Eurocentric concept that, said, that has not only transformed former colonized and colonizing societies, but also has a direct connection to territorial colonization and the dynamics of power within the global system. Modernity would have had no framework or means to develop its own aesthetic without the historical conditions of the colonial matrix. Aesthetic parameters that can be traced back to modernity can be found all in all forms of artistic expression, um, she continues. And also we heard this before in, in, in the talk um, just now, whether modern or not, the one dimensional model of modernity provides the standard to define even in non-European spaces. Adam Ahafes, um, an Egyptian choreographer and curator, questions the historiographical practices themselves. The tool that generates knowledge and reproduces knowledge is part of a Western canon of knowledge. So he says, um, knowledge generated by Western methods of production, applied by Western researchers within Western social contexts, is generated and simultaneously makes universal claims. An anthropologist looks at ballet as a form of ethnic dance. This is a quote from the 1970s from John Kelina Hamaku um, that is much quoted and is read by many as a provocation. Okay. Um, sorry, just a short time check. 
Okay. Um, yeah, it's read by many as a provocation. The emotional reactions point out a distinction of classical dance from other dance forms. While ballet's seemingly universal status has already been exposed under its Eurocentric and imperialistic veil, it nevertheless holds this status as a self-evident and foundational dance form, the mother of all dances upon which all other forms are built, says uh, Adeni in 2021. Today, the superiority of classical dance still extends far beyond Europe and North America, and its ongoing supremacy is often questioned. May Saifan describes how in Arab countries only ballet is considered proper dance and everything outside of it is viewed within uh, is viewed with little value in society, even derogatorily. Adam Hafez also criticizes the status of Western dance in Arab dance schools compared to local dance forms. Rajyashri Ramesh describes her experiences as a dancer trained in Indian dance forms in 2005, um, when there was a five-year initiative aimed to um, change the dance, the contemporary dance to an equal art form alongside opera and theater in Germany. Ramesh reports that everything that did not fall under contemporary dance fell um, by the wayside at that time, while demands to modernize traditional forms were made. Why am I not modern? This question accompanied her and other non-European colleagues um, at that time. She commented on the lack of access and visibility of pluralistic dance forms and pleads for the recognition of multiple forms on the level of dance technique as every dance form has its own dance technique, even if it is denied to many dance forms in the European discourse. The field of education significantly contributes to this um, by its access restrictions and the lack of diverse artistic training. So modern, traditional, Western, non-Western, foreign, native, these binary constructions are becoming increasingly questionable. Sandra Chateria calls for a contemporary dance to be opened upon a multi-perspective dance that reflects social and cultural political power relations and works with dance forms that are marked as traditional and ethnicized on eye level and as a substantial part of German contemporary dance practice. False equality is not going to solve anything. It is merely performative. Adam Hafez points this out in the quote. Social debates about the right to equal participation of all members of society are highly re relevant. However, the maintenance of hegemonies and institutions is sustained by the current institu instrumentalization, sorry, the current instrumentalization of diversity, Nora Armin um, says. Vera Heimisch, a representative of the um, of the decolonization debate in German speaking countries also comments on this and on how particularly in cultural institutions, many projects claim to break down hierarchies and the authority of white de decision makers. But she wonders how these concepts can have a lasting effect if they always operate along hegemonic structures that actually need to be broken down. She questions the use of terms such as decolonial and collaborative, as their inflationary use makes it easier for some institutions to access funding these days. Dancers from street dance communities are very interested in working with theaters, just as contemporary and classical dancers are interested in collaborating with dancers from street dance communities. However, access to the dance and theater world can be a barrier. Lack of information may play one role, but most significantly, not having academic proof of dance training creates a barrier. There are no written certificates for the skills and expertise that these dancers learned over the years of autodidactic training at sessions in communities or at battles. They carry their knowledge in their bodies, not on paper, which often makes it difficult for them to access funding and opportunities. 
These demands expressed must be turned into a plan and handed over to those in positions to make a difference, to establish new plans, leaders, and issues. Here, strategy is needed because moments of transformation always have an inherent fragility and we should not let it pass. So if the term institutionalized dance refers to forms that receive state subsidized spaces for practice, teaching and presentation, contemporary dance has overcome its initial exclusion in this field. As an offspring of classical dance, it now plays an indispensable role in the art form of dance. The research, my research has shown that classical and contemporary dance are institutionally entrenched and subsidized by various dance houses, academies, and um, choreographic centers. These realities pr provide fertile ground for these dance forms to grow, to develop, and to be publicly recognized. Consequently, dance forms that exist outside of these contexts are structurally in a more vulnerable position to sustain and flourish. And this disproportion is used here to illustrate the dominance of institutionalized dance forms over non-institutionalized dance forms, as I assumed in my central question. A major problem seems to be the categorization into pop cultural and artistic dance, which usually refers to classical or contemporary dance. This polarity is rooted in the Western dance modernity, which causes a divergent cultural positions of different dance forms and results in the belittling and denial of the artistic substance of dance forms outside of the so-called artistic dance. Um, connected to this is also the lack of access to support and career opportunities in the institutionalized dance world. The artistic value of dance practice depends on the recognition of legitimized spokespersons of the field in this way, or by adapting one's own style to Western or contemporary aesthetics. Institutional barriers can be overcome as dancers from various disciplines have reported. The binary construction of own and foreign also seems impossible to overcome. Those affected report that they are either admired or rejected because of their foreignness. However, it is important to distinguish between appreciation and exotization, like cultural appreciation and, and admiration can turn into cultural appropriation when uh, superficial appropriations are made without developing meaningful um, connections to the communities from where they were, take, where they were taken. And, um, the dissection of the institutional, artistic, and social status of different branches of the European dance landscape draws a hierarchical figure. Classical dance is at the top, followed by contemporary dance, while the broad spectrum of non-institutionalized dances ranges between the bottom and the top. And in the tension, in this tension between institutional recognition, generalization, exotization, trends, and devaluation, the field of dance shows one thing above all, there is still a lot to do. Spaces for critical reflection, engagement and encounters are needed. And for sustainable decolonial dialogues, it is important to be, um, to be, sorry. Um, it is important to be in spaces like this, basically, to make a change. Thank you all so much for listening. All the wonderful illustrations you saw are by Maren Amini and Tiziana Beck. And for the references to the things that I've mentioned, please send me an email. Um, you can also contact me through my Instagram. And I think there is no time for questions. Um, yeah. Thank you, Iris. We really appreciate it. Um, unfortunately, there were still technical problems with your slides and we weren't really seeing them, but we would like to ask to you oh. to email them to us so we can send them out to everybody later. We just oh didn't God, want to yes. interrupt you and then like lose more time on your presentation because we really wanted to hear from you. Ooh, okay. So. That was, and um, yes, sure. I will send, uh, maybe I can send it in the chat even. Yeah, that's also a possibility. Yeah, okay. So.